Welcome to the Everything Spiritual Podcast, providing community, connection and empowerment around life and spirituality. I'm Cara. I'm Amy. And I'm Maida. It is with great joy that I welcome our guest today, Steve Anil Nobel. Steve is the founder of Soul Matrix Healing, the author of five books, a book mentor and spiritual coach. Steve also gives talks and runs workshops and retreats. He offers free and powerful transmissions through his website and on YouTube. These transmissions help with the ascension process and the clearing away of things that have blocked us from expressing our true nature. These transmissions have had a transformative impact on me, so I'm filled with joy to be able to share them and we're filled with joy to be able to interview you. So welcome, Steve. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. (laughs) Um, Steve, I wanted to ask you about the transmissions, how they sort of came to be and how they came, you know, came through and what it actually feels like to receive them as well. So I went through this big transition, which was a dark night of the soul. Everything switched off for me. It started 2010. I was a director of this spiritual organization and I was very much in tune with higher self and angels and guides and using it very much to help that organization connect with people, move, and it's a very successful organization and the angels really helped us connect and make it very successful. But then I got the impulse that I should be leaving and shifting somehow and I resisted the impulse. And that resistance created eventually an explosion or implosion in my life. Everything imploded. I resigned from that organization and I I separated from my second long-term partnership and I went through this very long dark night of the soul. I started coming out of that in 2014, 15. And I think it was 2016 where I started getting contacted because everything switched off. So when it started switching back on again, it's almost like a radio station switching on, but not just one station, but several. And I was in Greece. I started doing writing retreat. I only had one participant on this one, which was kind of really nice. Previous ones I'd had more. And so I had lots of time for myself. And I remember going along the sea and there was this chapel on the coast a small one, you could fit about 10 people in there. And I remember sitting there meditating. And then I felt this, this presence coming in, like a, felt like a pressure on top of my head. And it felt like someone's trying to contact me. And I sat there for an hour. And then it seemed like um, some form of ancient energy in the landscape that was trying to connect with me. One of the first ones I did was the Earth Star Goddess, which was in Greece. And that was really this ancient goddess feminine energy, which was part of this whole ascension process is um, the feminine returning. So when I had this energy come to me, I remember thinking, I don't have a womb. I shouldn't be channeling the goddess. <laughs> uh, they didn't seem to mind, so I did it. And in the early days, I was very clunky with my technical skills, my video on YouTube. Uh, but then I started to get more and more of these contacts. And I decided also to uh, upgrade my video skills and start doing better on audio editing. So I really wanted to make sure it came through really clearly rather than all these any glitches in the audio or anything. So one after the other started connecting with me. So there were star races. I had Lyrans. I had Syrian. I had the early days. Uh, more feminine archetypal energies coming through and Egyptian goddess Isis. And there was no order to it. And I asked, shouldn't it be a kind of order? My midheaven in astrology is Virgo. So I have this kind of structure sense of, wouldn't it be nice to have an order? Like, let's do a load of Egyptian ones or let's do a load of star ones <laughs> and so people can make sense of it. But they went, no, we're going to do what we want to do it. And I was like, okay, I'll just trust and flow with it. So I, I, it was a higgledy-piggledy. And it still is a little bit like that. But what I'm noticing now is that there's an order in that the dots are starting to form over about two years. I can start to see connections between different ones and almost like what they're trying to do. But one of the other things about the transmissions was I never wanted to put people into some expensive program to receive things. I wanted to give it away. So 98% of the work is given away, and that's the way it should be, really, because this period is so important. This a period of ascension is so important that I'm not here to lock it into 10 people who are super wealthy in America who can give me thousands of pounds just to access it. That's not the point of it. It's totally in line with my ethos. And I think the guides who are contacting me, they just wanted to get it out there. And I'm really happy to get it out there as as quickly as possible, as far as wide as possible. I'm getting emails from all over the world saying how much it touches people. 
and transforms people. And the feedback is quite overwhelming, but I realize it's not me doing it. It's almost like the energy is coming through are doing the stuff. So I, my ego can relax and go, oh, phew, it's not me. I don't have to you know, get all inflated or whatever. One of the last ones I did was lower astral clearing transmission, which uh, is on YouTube. That one was very strong. It is very strong still. And it took, it took me a few weeks to process it because it's a very uh, strong intention, which is clearing out lower astral, which is the collective gunk of humanity. So it's quite that one. I think I'm still processing really. So as, as I do these transmissions, there's a processing for me and of course for everyone else who's connected to it. So it's a growing group. I think there's about 19,000 on YouTube following it. And, um, and they're everywhere. You know, I'm getting people from Mongolia, Africa, America love, American Australia love me. You know, they're, they're like the core audience. Brit, Britain is a good third one. But strange places, you know, uh, up in Finland and Russia, they're all over. Alaska, someone was coming from Alaska, I think, the other one. So it's really everywhere. And that's what I want to do because star seeds are everywhere. The process of awakening is happening everywhere, even in the darkest nations. So if you can go in those places, and I'm getting the stats, which shows me it's going into Saudi Arabia and Israel and these kind of countries, which, which are going through a dark phase, of course, at the moment. So yeah, I'm very happy to do it. So the process for me feels like I get, it's almost like inspiration or touched or pressure. And I'm fin- then I have to understand what is this about? And then I go through it in myself until I understand, oh, it's about this is the focus. And I run it through myself. Sometimes it runs through me in the dream state or when I'm, particularly when I'm waking up, that nice period when you're waking up, that it runs through me, click, and I go, oh, it's ready to do it. And now I go. If it's not ready, it keeps running until something then moves through me. And then I go, oh, that's it. All the bits are clear for me. So we can do it now. Because I don't want, I'm not one of these people that just go spirit, speak through me and I'll just go with it. I want to know the point of it. I want to know where it's going. I want to know the impact on me. And then that's the agreement I have with them. Once I'm okay with it, I'll run with anything they send me. Yeah, because I have worked in a lot of workshops and I've and retreats. And I've, I've worked with people who are very fluid and flowing where you never know what's going to come out of their mouth the next moment. And I'm, I'm kind of more like, what is the point of this thing we're doing? I want to know. And within that structure, then we can flow wherever we want. But if we're just going everywhere, I get very nervous. <laughs> Everything I do should have a solid structure. And within that structure, sometimes when I come to record something, the content changes and I go with it. I think that's fine. As long as the structure, I'm clear on the structure, I don't mind what comes through. So that's the agreement I have with them. And that's what happens really. It's very cool. (laughs) (laughs) 